public. Tomorrow will be the first day it's open to the public. And uh, as Bert said, a, a lot of people uh, put in a lot of work over the last few years to make this happen. And, and uh, Bert already mentioned Heidi and Julie. Uh, Carl Roser, our photographer, uh, spent a lot of time helping us go through photographs, many years of photographs. Uh, Greg and Ruby, many years of videos. Uh, and, and I think uh, Bert mentioned Bob Lavriola, uh, who has become our team historian. So uh, I'm sure I'm leaving people out. I apologize to anybody I did, but uh, just it was, it was a great team effort, and a lot of people uh, worked really hard to make it happen. So thanks to Franco for being here today, help us uh, open the open the museum and Dan. And uh, so now we'll kind of want to just stage it real quick for the photo opportunity. this room, uh, that wall behind you is uh, the pre-Steeler wall, pre-1933, uh, so you may be able to see over there, my grandfather played on several uh, Sandlot teams in the, in the 20s, which uh, was the start of kind of getting ready to bring a team into professional football, but uh, there's a lot of, lot of different pictures of him over there in, in uh, his uniform in the 20s, playing baseball as well, uh, his boxing club, so uh, that's the, like I said, the pre-Steeler era, and then start the, the museum is organized by the decade. So the 30s start over there, the 40s. This uh, is a somewhat of a replica of my grandfather's office. Uh, most of these pictures were in his office at one time, and uh, this was one of his desks, one of his early desks. And uh, on that side is my dad's, a replica of my dad's office, and some of the pictures that he had in his his office, and of course. There's a little sort of bit of story about each of them, and, and uh, throughout the museum, there's a, you know stories about each individual, and then there are you know video locations throughout where you can uh, play a little video about the different decades. So uh, that's how this room's organized, and then others will show you kind of as you go forward through the through the decades. But happy to try and answer any questions if you have any. Or how did this come to be? When did you get the idea that you wanted to do this? You know, we thought about it for a while, um, but I'd say the last three years or so, it's been really kind of trying to plan it, hiring an architect and bringing people on board to really make it happen. So a few years in the making. What would your dad think about it all? Mark? Hopefully he would like it. Uh, you know, I think uh, obviously he, he loved the history and uh, he loved black and white photography. So we have a lot of black and white photography. And uh, yeah, I, I think he would like it, I hope so. What were some of the memories that start? We had a ton that were flooding through as you're looking at these pictures and putting this together. Yeah, I, I mean, the uh, going through all these pictures uh, brought back an awful lot of memories, and, and uh, you know, really trying to pick through what what to use and what not to use was uh, a lot of work, but a lot of fun to be honest with you. And uh, you know, looking back at the the Buddy Parker days, you know, I was a young kid at the time, but there, there were some great players. Big Daddy loved these jerseys over there, so. Guys like that made a big impression on me as a as a young guy, and uh, so the, the early days in particular were a lot of lot of fun to work on. Art, do you have a favorite part here? Something that stands out. You know, I, I can't say I have a favorite part. I mean, obviously, this history, you know, in this room with my family is, is special, but there's a lot of special stuff in here. Or what do you want fans to know about your family? You know, I just want them to understand the uh, you know the history of trying to build the franchise and you know as you know my grandfather started the team in, in the 1930s and rough times during the depression uh, he actually started you know teams in the 20s and, and uh, grew you know grew into a professional team and uh, so I think you know having people understand the early history I think it'd be great if people understand that better the pre-1930 stuff when we first walked in there where did you find all that who, there were no Steeler records like who kept all that well, some of those pictures we've had in the family uh, over the years, but some of them we, uh, you know, we had to unearth uh, and, and you know, reached out to different museums and different websites. I mean, these days it's amazing what you can find online. So tracking down different pictures from different eras was, uh, again, it was a lot of fun to, to find them. And you know, we had a lot more. I mean, we could, we could have filled up another wall. 
Art, I've heard about three or four different people tell me that they were the ones who told your grandfather about Franco's catch after he got off the elevator. Who actually told him and where, do you know? Well, uh, it was right when the elevator opened, and, I, and you're right, I've heard several different people who rode down in, in the elevator with them. Uh, so I'm not sure who exactly it was. I'm not sure. All right, anything else? Or, uh, just uh, quickly, you take pride in your championships and, and, and uh, the connection to the fans that you have. But how much pride do you have in, in not only the legacy, but in preserving and continuing the legacy? And, and do you get emotional when you see the final product here? Yeah, it, it is emotional, and uh, you know, it was a, a labor of love putting this together. That's for sure, and, and really uh, being able to dis display, uh, you know, a lot of stuff that we had in drawers and trunks and things like that. Uh, it's great to be able to put this on display and have our fans come in and, and uh, you know, learn more about the history for sure. Three years later, the Steelers were an emerging power. Some of the best players in the game and no record for Super Bowl. He also coached what would be 12 future home franchise uh, and the reasons for that shift. Uh, the guy who was on that wall right there, uh, Chuck Knoll, and then the NFL draft uh, were the driving forces between taking the Steelers kind of out of the dark ages and into this area, which you can kind of refer to uh, as the Renaissance. Now, in that uh, gold area there in the middle, that represents all of the players who are in, currently in the Steelers Hall of Honor when they were drafted, what year and what round. And then on the bottom, uh, we featured the 1974 draft, uh, the most famous, the most successful in the history of professional sports. Four of the first five players picked ended up in the Hall of Fame. Uh, couple of guys up there who were largely responsible for that, Bill Nunnart Rooney Jr. And then that photo there of Dan Rooney and his father uh, marking the 1971st round. The Steelers won the coin toss with the Chicago Bears uh, to get the first pick, and they drafted uh, Terry Bradshaw. Now, in co uh, coinciding with the 1970s, Three River Stadium opened. These are lockers. Uh, the older people in this group, I see a few of you who were in the Three River Stadium locker room. These were lockers, uh, players that were uh, playing that at that time, uh, just to give you an idea. Now this, this quote here, uh, the best team in professional football is right here in this room. This quote uh, was from 1974. When the 74 playoffs began, the Steelers game in the first round was against Buffalo at Three River Stadium, they beat the Bills. In Oakland, that same day, the Raiders beat the defending champion Dolphins. Uh, they were undefeated the year before. The game was known as the Sea of Hands game. Uh, after that game, in the euphoria of the moment, John Madden said to the media, when he was asked about the excitement or something, he said, well, that's what you can expect when the two best teams in football play. So then, uh, the following day of the team meeting, uh, and it's really better to hear Joe Green tell this story because he was there. But Chuck Knoll said something about he began the team meeting with, I understand that some people think that the two best teams in football played yesterday and the Super Bowl has already been decided. And then said that. Um, and the team erupted. Joe Green explains it as, Chuck Noll never did that kind of stuff. And so when he picked his, he picked his spot, it had an incredible impact. And it still was not yet known as that. It was being called at that time a miracle play. Myron Cope had yet to work. Uh, it's broadcast booth, as you can see. It's constructed pretty much like a radio booth uh, currently looks like. And fans who are interested in participating in this, get an opportunity to call on one of the great plays in Steelers history. Um, the fan would go in, as you can see, you know, there's video there, microphones, you sit down at the, um, at the desk there, uh, you get a chance to watch the video of the play that you select that you want to um, do your call to, uh, and then you get to watch it with the actual uh, call of the play live that have happened on, on the date of the game. 
and it also appears with a transcript. So you can kind of read along with Fleming's call of the Immaculate Reception. Okay? Then when that's over, then they play the video again, and you get to make your call. When you're finished, uh, then the audio of that will be emailed to the fan uh, at the fan's email address, and it's something that they can keep. And I'm telling you, it's not as easy as you might think. From that game, the one that's not there is Bill Bowman. Or not, please don't shoot the photos of that. We're just trying to give you an idea of kind of where the current players stand. You can see. history. Uh, it, it really captures the spirit, captures the story. Uh, even myself going, going through here and uh, uh, reading some history, uh, I never knew that they also partnered with the, with the Cardinals at one time. And I knew the Eagles, but uh, you, know, you know, so much history. Uh, when you look at the beginning, how tough things were and, and, and all the things that the NFL had to go through, teams had to go through, but uh, they persevered and uh, look where we're at today. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm so happy that fans are gonna be able to come here and, and, and enjoy this and, and, and really grasp this, that, that uh, you know, there's so much information here, uh, you know, visually, reading-wise, uh, film that uh, that Steelers Nation, uh, I guess, want to say, can really just soak it in. Uh, so, thank you guys. Questions? I, I want to thank the Steelers Oops. for making this available. It's it's beautiful and uh, and it's great. Oh, I should say it's super. <laughs> okay, questions for Franco, a few. Franco, what's your definition of the Steelers' way? The Steelers' way, that when I look about how tough it was in the beginning, that, uh, and they took that toughness to greatness, and, and, that's how I feel the Steelers' way is now. That is all about greatness, and but I, but I always feel that there's that tough element that will always be there if need be. Uh, but everything now is let let's be great. Anyone else? Frank, right, did you get emotional going through here when you when you not only looked at? your team's history, your history, but the history of the, the franchise? You know what, you can't help but get emotional. Uh, I guess, personally, it, uh, uh, as you said, being tied into this uh, makes it personal, make it, makes it emotional. Uh, but I also feel honored to be a part, a part of this great history and and I guess I've been here 50 years now and the Steelers are going on 90 and and I, I guess we kind of talk about sometimes the, the first 40 uh, but I guess we focus more on the last 50 and uh, but you know when you look at it 
uh, with you know with the chief, old man Rooney, it was all about Pittsburgh, really, all about Pittsburgh, and and what this team end up meaning to Pittsburgh was just just incredible. And and as I said, he had some tough times and toughed it out, and and here we are today. And like also when I look at not only the football players, what we did on the field, but all the other things that are tied into football. And I think of, you know, Myron Cope and the terrible towel, you know, that where else in sports was there something like that? Uh, you know, that, uh, you know, that, that happened where, uh, you know, a radio announcer, you know, uh, came up with something so big and so special for the team and for Steelers Nation. Uh, you know, now look at our equipment manager. Just talk about Tony Parisi, uh, trainer Ralph Berlin. You know, the people that we had were just incredible and a, and a big part of, a big part of this. That I guess that made up this fabric of, uh, of greatness, Joe Gordon, you know, just, Boy, it just makes you feel so proud that that this was all part of it, all part of it, and and as you know, a lot of that still is a big part of it today. So. Anyone else? Franco, I don't know if I know this answer or not. How long after the game, the immaculate reception, did you see a replay of the play? Immediately, days, weeks? Every day. Please. I mean, immediately after. <laughs> <laughs> no, but. but uh, uh, you know what, uh, a lot of people would talk about it, but what's interesting that during our playing days, we didn't talk about it. You know, even if we're around playing poker, having fun, doing, we would never talk about, say, the Immaculate Reception, but we wouldn't talk about last year's Super Bowl. You know, we were just enjoying the moments then. And uh, uh, so during our playing days, we didn't reflect a lot on our immediate past. Uh, but once we retired, that's all we talked about. You know? <laughs> and, uh, uh, but sometimes I think about that, that while we're playing, you know, we didn't say, oh, that play the immaculate reception, or, or you know, that game, or, or like this game. No, it, like, it seemed like it was always, always the moment, and, uh, and, and what was ahead. Uh, but, and I don't think anybody saw the 70s coming. Uh, nobody could have predicted the 70s from the first 40 years. And uh, and I think that's what also makes it makes it special. Nobody saw it coming, and when it was happening, people really didn't grasp it. I don't think any of us grasped it, you know, when it was actually happening. But once it was once it was over, it was like, wow, did you see what they just did in the time that they did it? And look at this team, as you mentioned, 10 Hall of Famers, and we definitely feel that Andy Russell and L.C. Greenwood should, you know, be part of that, you know. But right now we have 10 Hall of Famers from that team, and, uh, you know, little did we know, uh, you know, when, uh, when, we, when we look back, it was just hard to imagine that something that great, that much, I guess I'm gonna say that much fun. If you were here during the 70s, it was fun. And people had a great time. And I mean, and you look at the start of Steelers Nation with Dorella's Gorillas, Franco's Italian Army, and did eventually, you know, Douglas Schunker, Lambert Lewis. I mean, Steelers Nation started to take hold and it was incredible. The songs, you know, how'd the song go? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one
Yeah, you know what I mean? Come on, you guys know that song. <laughs> like, I mean, you know, having all that, you know, having the song, all these fan clubs, the terrible town, it all came, you know, great players winning Super Bowl. It all came together. And, and so, you know, here we are, I guess, celebrating some, and, and I, and I want to say, I can't tell you how proud I am that they kept it going for 50 years. You know, it wasn't like, oh, no, no you know, Cal or Tom. I, I mean, a third coach in 50 years, everybody winning Super Bowls, come on. This is, this is incredible, guys. I mean, boy, it, it's, I mean, that's all I can say is how incredible is that? And it, and it hasn't, you know, hasn't stopped yet. So, you know, you feel very proud and honored to be a part of this Hall of Honor.